So I've now got to the stage where I can lift the balls up to the top of the helicoil lift and I'm now going to adjust this vertical track here so that the balls come out and then they go round on a high level bendy piece of copper track and join up with the existing top track here. That'll distribute all the copper over this way a little bit more and hopefully look really nice and pretty as, as well as the balls will go around in a, in a slow manner. Now I'm trying to not have any straight copper tracks on this sculpture. I like the curves, I like them going to the right and to the left, sometimes quite big curves, sometimes little curves. And I've got to decide how I'm going to do this. Shall I make a carpal template or shall I just bend the copper around various things? So the bending jigs I've been using up until now have been basically different diameter paint pots or bits of wood and it's always a struggle to find the right one. I've got shelves full of DIY kit around and it was always a bit complicated and they're all a bit messy and they all kind of get in the way and you can never quite find the right one. A long time ago I made these little uh, CNC cutout MDF bending jigs. They've got various um, diameters written on them. Uh, I use a nine millimeter track so I made all the circles to be nine millimeters apart but they don't go very big and often I don't need quite so many that are small so I wanted something bigger. I also made some uh, ellipses in the early days and they were an attempt to bend around you know a large and then a small radius. I also bought these sets of French curves which um, I've been trying to use to bend but they're very very thin and they've got um, they're for drawing really so they've got these kind of cutouts in them so that you don't smudge the ink and these are really hard to you kind of, kind of keep them still and bend around and again they're not quite the right thing so I'd like to introduce you to what I've made which is my rainbow bending jig now this is various circles cut out again on the CNC by a local company um, I drew them all and each one of them has got little radiuses at the end so I can have a little bit of straight and then a, a nice radius into these curves they're made of 6mm MDF and all I've done is glue them together in a nice kind of stack and I've painted them with a little bit of watercolours just to make them really super duper pretty. So the idea is this of these is that I'll clamp them to the bench and then I can bend around and I can do a big bend, test it out, a medium bend, test it out, a smaller bend, test it out. Um, if I go too far I can get back to the big bend and kind of open it out. So I'm hoping to use this from now quite a lot in order to make the nice curvy copper top track. So welcome to episode 27. We are getting there. It is nearly done. It shouldn't be too much longer. I think, I think I'm on the downward final straight. So let's get soldering.
Yeah, it's pretty hard to do actually. I mean, getting one curve, one piece of copper done nicely was actually quite nice, but getting the second one to match the first one, when it's this long and there's so many curves that make up the copper, it is actually quite difficult. But I think I've got enough now. I'll just start here putting in track spacers every 50 millimeters and I can do the final bending as we go. Uh, when I got somewhere handy I'll offer it up to the uh, sculpture and make this end correct and make this end correct. Finally I think this is too short I'm gonna have to um, I'm gonna have to do a bit of extending on this one I think but we'll find out later on. So I've got it roughly balanced in place. There's a little temporary bracket here and here holding this up at a nice angle. And I've bent this round so it kind of joins on here, but it's it's not attached at all. It's just just resting. And the balls go around nicely. So I'm going to attach this now here and then put some brackets up from these three or four places.
<laughs> um, I bet you didn't see that coming. Uh, the balls came off here because there was no um, angle on the tracks to keep the ball in place. Also, the solder joints I did were um, pretty horrible. So I've redone it. Um, this is a, two new pieces of wire that's in and a new support. I've also done this support and this support. So just two more to do, one on here and one on here. And that'll keep the track nice and still. Well, I think that was the last joint that I have to do to get a fully working system. I've got to put the LEDs on, I've got to put a few little bits and bobs on to make it a bit more pretty, finish off the, um, the strength of everything, um, put the lift back on and the chain and wire all that up and hide the electrics and basically give it a nice, decent polish and get it reliable. And then I'll put it for sale and that will be in the next video. It will be the finished video where everything is working and presented and um, yeah, one of those glorious videos that people will, uh, will hopefully flock and watch. So if you've already watched that and you've come back to see me making it, you're nearly there. There's only one more to go, but then you know that because you're from the future because you've already seen it finished. Thanks YouTube. Right, let's give it a little test. Brilliant. I'll see you next time on RPS3 for episode 28, where it will be finished. See you then, whenever it will be. I'll see you then. Thanks. Bye.